So you're back. This was a fabulous presentation. If you like, we can have people ask some questions. And a few of them have already come in the chat about snacking specifically for Sharon, because she says she likes to snack and she gets hungry between meals if she doesn't. And one of your tenants of losing weight forever was not to snack. So, so can you please comment a bit about snacking? Well, uh, snacking is a problem. Uh, we find out 60% or more of women who snack, who stop snacking, will take care of the weight problem without doing anything more than that. So it's it's not good from the obesity standpoint. Uh, secondly, digestion. Uh, when you take a washing machine, you don't put uh, unwashed clothes in in the middle of the cycle. And same with your stomach. You don't put food in the middle of the cycle when it hasn't gotten through digesting what you already have in there. So it takes five hours or so to get that digested and you don't want to put more in time. I, I had a student, she got her master's degree and I was her uh, chief officer, uh, a teacher uh, sponsoring that project. And we gave people an ounce of peanuts, say an hour after they had started their meal and finished it. And it just messed it up. The stomach emptying time was delayed tremendously. Uh, so snacking is not a good idea. Okay, thank you. Now, let's. I, I'd like you to expound a little bit about what you said about this opiate and the producing the opiates. And when they got an opiate blocker, they lost weight. Because you actually did a presentation earlier this year about that. But are you saying that this is something that just people that are overweight experience or everyone? No, th this is something that we're thinking about, especially with overweight problems. In other words, there are some overweight people. It's just not a psychological thing that they want to eat, but it's a body craving for the food because of the opium. Now, we don't know what percent of the, ob of the overweight people are of that type. We just learned this. We're just beginning to study this. And then, and with the insulin resistance business. We're just getting into that in a big way for these people too. This medicine that you can give them, which makes something like the body makes normally, makes for more beta cells in the pancreas and produces more insulin that they need at the right times. So we're just learning a lot more about weight that we never knew before. So it's a whole new field now. We, I don't have much to, to tell you because we don't know enough yet, but it's really exciting that there's a whole new field where it's not just somebody has got a bad habit. Right, exactly, because it's often considered a moral failure, people that are overweight. And I'm curious, uh, did you ever struggle with this problem or did people in your family ever have it? In my family? Yeah. Was anyone uh, have a weight problem? We know that we really didn't have that kind of a problem. Uh, my uh, mother, when she was in college, she was so skinny, they said she was still walking around just to save funeral expenses. <laughs> oh, my. Now, now, I was so skinny when I went to Harvard. I was so skinny. My mother said, you can't talk about health. You look too skinny. So I thought I would gain weight. And I did. I loved milk coming from China where the milk had to be boiled, didn't taste like anything. And this good milk in the U.S. tasted so good to me, I drank it, loads of it, to try to gain weight. I gained 30 pounds. I came back uh, and started teaching in medical school. And the pathologist who examined me physically found my cholesterol and triglycerides sky high. That's what the milk did to me. And so I had to stop that milk and all that stuff, but uh, I so I've had periods, a one period where I was so skinny and it tried to gain weight, but it did it the wrong way. That's so interesting that dairy products could put that much weight on you so quickly. What about alcohol? Because I know you're not a fan of it. You talked about that and how it's linked to cancer, but where does it stand in terms of people that struggle with their weight? Is that something that people that have... Uh, wanting to lose weight or have weight issues should be consumed? Well, you know, we took these rats and studied them. And every rat knows not to drink alcohol. 
humans haven't learned that yet, but every rat knows that. And they don't drink alcohol. You put them on a junk food diet and they start uh, drinking a little alcohol. Seventh week became real alcoholic rats. Uh, and that's what, and then another thing, they developed more opium. So the bad diet made them crave alcohol and crave opium. The two went together. And it has to do with the dopamine center of the brain that does this. Yeah. Somebody's asking what you eat on a daily basis. What's that? Somebody's asking, what does Dr. Scharfenberg eat on a daily basis? Oh, what do I eat? Well, I eat only twice a day. That's one of the big differences. Now, it's getting quite exciting that when you have an 18-hour pause, they call it intermittent fasting, from the last meal of the day till the next one, that does a lot of good uh, for you. It does a lot of good. And it not only helps weight, but it helps uh, sleep apnea. It helps metabolic uh, diseases. And Neil Nedley is going to have me speak on that subject more in detail later. But it is something new that we're working on, uh, idea that it helps all your hormone balance, everything much better to have that intermittent fasting, 18 hours from the end of one meal to the beginning of that next one. Does it have to be the way you do it, Dr. Scharfenberg? Because for many people, especially people with families and children, the idea of skipping dinner and not eating with their family is difficult for them, but they're able to do it by skipping breakfast and eating maybe an early lunch and an earlier dinner. We don't think skipping breakfast works. And we are sure exactly why. But we don't think it works. It works for what, though? When you say works, works for what? Well, it, it doesn't... Uh... What should I say? You don't lose the weight as fast. You don't, uh, it doesn't take care of the sleep apnea, the metabolic thing, sy syndromes. Uh, uh, not all those are still uh, occur. It, it's like night workers, for example, night workers die sooner than day workers. And they're on more of the, that kind of a program. That is interesting. Somebody's asking if your parents also live to be 100 or anyone else in your family. No, no. My family didn't live very long. My mother died in her late 60s. My father, when he was 76. Uh, my one brother died at uh, 87 and the other one at 82. Uh, I've outlived my two brothers, uh, 14 and 17 years. So it, was, it wasn't our genes that we're doing it it was so, a different thing that happened and the major thing i did different than my brothers was i i started at age 51 to work and with alzheimer's disease we know working in midlife exercise in midlife is the important time between 40 and 70. of course another thing i did differently than my brothers i went on two meals a day they didn't do that and we're just now getting into some scientific things that may be important about that intermittent fasting business. Wow, that is just so interesting. So, <laughs> what are the statistics for men living to 100 and beyond? You know, it's very few men out of 100 people who are 100 uh, years of age. <clears throat> out of 100 of them, 15 of them are men. Only 15 out of 100 are men. So very few men get to live that long, okay? Then how many of those men still drive cars? Very few. I'm in a very small group. Well, you not only drive, but you can drive it now. You <laughs> drive a little red sports car. So you really are quite unique. But anyway, it, it's there's very few people that lived as long as I had who are still driving cars. A very small percent. I'm trying to figure out what it is. Well, it's zero, 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 many zeros before you get to the numbers. Oh, here, here's a question I know the answer to. And I guess um, if you watch his, you know, he's done three other presentations on this channel, Stephanie, including one on cancer, one on uh, weight and one on longevity. But did you ever consume coffee or alcohol? And when did you stop? My understanding is as, a, as an Adventist, those were never in your diet anyway. No, I never had, had any alcohol ever. 
tasted it. I've never, I, I don't use coffee. Yeah. There, the coffee is so, I don't want I, I, controversial, but so many doctors, including plant-based doctors, just think it's so good for us. <laughs> I don't think we, I, actually, there's no medical society that recommends coffee for anybody, for any reason. Yeah. Uh, over in Ostrava, Czech Republic, there were two universities. I lectured at both the same day. One was a public uh, health uh, group of students, and they asked me about coffee. And I, I said three reasons why we shouldn't drink coffee. Number one is that no medical group recommends coffee because there's not enough evidence to recommend it. And this came from a Harvard paper just recently. The second thing is the group that lives the longest in the U.S. doesn't drink coffee and recommends people not use it. That would be the Adventist vegetarian people, for example. And the third group is all doctors agree that pregnant women should not have any drugs during pregnancy and that and coffee is a drug. So that's a third reason. But we have other reasons. For example, one cup of coffee decreases the iron absorption by 50%. A cup of tea decreases it by 60%. Even a cup of milk, because of the calcium, decreases the iron absorption by 50%. That's quite a bit. And then coffee, one cup of coffee a day, compared to a cup of water, increases nitrosamine for, uh, development, production, by uh, about uh, tenfold. And that nitrosamine is a carcinogenic agent. So that's not good. So there's lots of other reasons I could talk about. But we, there are some people who are saying it's good for you because it helps the diabetic, less chance of diabetes, type 2. Well... The studies they did that showed that were short-term studies so that e even the American Diabetic Association doesn't agree to that yet because the study was too short. you got to have a longer-term study before they would accept anything like that. Interesting. Did you ever expect to live to 100? Was that a desire of yours? Well, you know, I, I saw a man the other day uh, we got started talking about heart disease. He said, I know, but I'm not going to stop my coffee. I'm not going to stop eating snakes. <laughs> so uh, there are a lot of people who know what they should do and don't want to do it. Our next breakthrough in health really is going to be figuring out how to persuade people to live like they even know they should do. We don't know how to do that yet. So interesting. Uh, Jennifer wants to know, do you have any vision problems? Do you wear glasses or contacts? And how do you keep your vision so well that you're still able to drive? Well, I used to wear glasses, but I had cataracts. I had cataract surgery, and the eye doctor puts in 20-20 lenses. So I had 20-20 lenses, threw my glasses away. So I've had good eyesight ever since. Yeah. And how's your hearing? But at eight, year 80, most people get cataracts. Interesting. How's your hearing? What's that? Uh, <laughs> I just said, how's your hearing? Oh, my hearing. My hearing <laughs> is the best. <laughs> my hearing is the best. Uh, do you do you need do you need to use hearing aids? Well, well, I go to a hearing doctor and they don't help me much. They say get a hearing aid. They don't tell me which kind. So I get one and try it for a while, and it doesn't help me one bit. That's and so, so I'm disappointed. Do you need I any? One of, I thought it would help. Are you able to walk unassisted or do you and, need a And key? I'll tell you, another one of my problems is uh, walking. Walking isn't the problem. But if I'm on the platform at a meeting and I'm supposed to walk down some steps without any railing, that's hard. I need help. Uh, and, and more or less, it's uh, balance. It's not... Uh, muscle development or anything like that, but it's balance is the problem. So I have a little problem sometimes in going up steps or stairs or down with if there's no railing. That makes sense. Do you need a walker or a cane in your daily life? 
No, I don't need a walker or a cane. <laughs> That's fantastic. So Susan is saying everything you said about coffee, is that also true for decaffeinated coffee? Now, well, you know, the cancer group's been working on that because there's other things in coffee that are problems other than caffeine. And so they aren't. They aren't really sure, but they think other kinds of things may also cause the cancer. But they're working on that. They're studying it. Yeah. Do you eat at restaurants? Somebody specifically asking if you ate at one in Fresno. We've had the chef on the show a couple of times called Roth Fresno. Well, I eat at restaurants sometimes, yes. I, I like Chinese food. Um, you were born in China. I was born in China. Uh, <clears throat> but I eat at restaurants sometimes. I tell you, I used to like to go to the old Swedish smorgasbords where they'd have a hundred different kinds of salads. <laughs> I, I used to like that very much. But, but there's some foods I think we need to eat more of that we aren't doing. I told you one about the avocado mm -hmm. and I told you about the soy. The people eat, eat a little bit of soy. It doesn't give them the, the help that a lot of soy will help them with. But what about people like me that were born allergic to soy? I mean, am I am I sunk? Well, if you're allergic to something, you can't eat it. Excepting you learn how to try to get over the allergy. There's oh. ways to do that. Interesting. If you eat just a teeny bit of what you're allergic to, teeny bit, every day for a month or two, and then get it a little bit more every day for a month or two, then a little bit more. I've had people get off their allergies to bananas that way. Wow. So we can, get, we can get rid of some of those allergies. Interesting. So somebody's asking, they know that you eat two meals, it's breakfast and lunch, but what are those two meals? Like specifically, what are you having for breakfast? What are you having for lunch? And about what time are you having it? Well, I wake up about four o'clock, get up about four o'clock, and I eat breakfast usually at 6.30, and uh, <clears throat> I can give you a lot of good breakfast. I like Chinese meal. I could have that for breakfast. <laughs> uh, walk cookery, you know, uh, but I usually have fruits at breakfast. Uh, I like to have uh, grains, whole grains. Uh, have you ever taken, say, grape juice and thickened it with a little cornstarch and heated it? I haven't. What What do you use that on? Like, it, it just, well, just... I put it on Zweibach, twice baked bread. You know, it's like croutons, only it's a whole piece of bread, and you break it up with smaller pieces, put peanut butter or almond butter on top, and then put this on top. I I have that for lunch many times. That's very delicious. Uh, but I like oatmeal waffles, my two to two recipe, two cups of oats, two cups of water, two tablespoons of oil, and a, and with a new Chinese cast iron waffle irons, you don't need any oil. Right. You don't even need oil in the batter. Because remember when you came here and Tammy Kramer made you waffles for lunch? There was no oil in those. Yeah, right. You don't have to have oil. And anyway, then I had a little bit of salt, half a teaspoon of salt. And you put it in a very hot waffle iron. It takes about 15 minutes. But the new Chinese cast iron waffle irons do them in four minutes. But they're expensive. $700 machine. <laughs> oh, do you have one of those machines? <laughs> but anyway, I had a friend in uh, in uh, Poland. He bought one of those. And he, he's made good waffles. They were delicious. And then with a waffle, put a nut brother on top. And then fruit on top of that, it, it's good. Uh, so my, I, I like that for a breakfast, waffle, a good do, type of waffle. Do you have one of those $700 waffle makers? No, I don't. I've never even heard about them because mine, mine was like $39. No, this is the first time I've seen it. He, the man liked my recipe so much. He got one of those waffle irons and it worked fine. It worked good. In four minutes, he had a waffle. I would love if you have a link. I would love to investigate that. That but uh, I like I like scrambled tofu for breakfast. I like that very much, <clears throat> and I I recommend 
maybe 25 grams or 100 grams, maybe a day. If you take that 400 gram tofu box, and take one quarter of it a day, that gives you enough to do you some good. But this little strips that we did do for flavoring is not enough to get the good out of the soy. Mm -hmm. So here we had a great question here from Susanna, and she says, do you ever feel hungry in between meals? If so, how do you deal with that? I really want to stop snacking, even if it's healthy food. We, we say when you feel hungry, drink a glass of water. <laughs> yeah, but I'll tell you, I've been on two meals a day most of my life. But now as I'm older, I don't want to eat very much at one time. And in that way, it makes me then want to eat more often. So right now I'm having a little hard time playing around with my meal planning, whether I should stick with the two or have three, but have smaller ones. <clears throat> because I fill up too fast. And on two meals a day, I'm filling up too fast. but. I, I don't get enough calories. Interesting. Yeah, that's so interesting. I feel like, you know, here's the thing. I, I eat a lot. I, well, I feel like I eat a lot, but I never have room to snack because I eat so much at my two meals, you know? Yes. Well, I, I like grains, uh, cooked rice, cooked, cooked corn cornmeal, or, you know, cooked wheat, whole wheat, uh, quinoa, quinoa. All these kinds of cereals are good. I like them with fruit on top. That sounds good. Okay, so here's a great question from Anne. Dr. Scharfenberg, what is the number one thing that gives you hope? And what advice would you give to pass along to an elderly parent who doesn't have any hope? Uh, well, I think from the religious standpoint, I have hope in an afterlife. So, so religious, my religion really helps me on hope. But what what gives me hope too is I want to accomplish something. And I, I think at my age, I thought I was done. But you started me on this lecturing like this on YouTube thing that I see now I can do a lot more. I, I don't want to stop now. Before I was ready to give up and stop and just relax. But now I think I should keep going <laughs> and let, tell other people the things I know. So that when you, you're accomplishing, accomplishing something, you want to keep living. Well, you, you, you have, I mean, you got, you, you got a whole new career here. You, 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 you know, you, you got to stick around, you know? So people are wondering how you, so when you have hunger, like if you eat your last meal at two and yeah. you eat breakfast at what time? Six, seven in the morning? 6.30. Okay. Do you, do you just drink a glass of water and deal with it or go to bed? Or do you maybe just sometimes have a little? No, I don't. Food? I don't. I'm not hungry because it's habit. It's habit that's taking charge. It's now the first two weeks, you're, three weeks, you start two meals a day, you're hungry. But after a time, you get over that. You're not hungry at all. So I'm not hungry. Nice. In fact, my kids brought up on two meals a day. And on two meals a day, there's less desire to snack. Mm. They don't have the desire to eat between meals. You know, Dr. Scharfenberg, I never heard anyone say that, but that is so interesting to me because even when I was heavy, I never ate three meals a day. I don't know why. It wasn't planned. I just always ate two. And I've never been a snacker, like ever. I don't even understand snacking because if you're hungry, just eat a meal. That is very interesting. I wonder if anyone's ever done research on that because- no. the, 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 my kids, when they're out with other kids, picking cherries up in the cherry tree. Most kids, every other cherry goes into the mouth. Every other cherry goes into the bag where they're picking for. <laughs> My kids never even thought about putting a cherry in their mouth <laughs> while they were picking cherries between meals. It was between meals. It wasn't the time to eat. It never occurred to them to put one in their mouth. <laughs> <clears throat> 
Okay, nice. Oh, Jennifer's asking, you had mentioned about getting over food allergies, but can a person also get over environmental allergies? Well, I don't know just how how to do that. I know how, how to do it sometimes with food, but I don't know how to do it environmentally, the hay fever type of thing. Yeah. Oh, Michelle would like to know, what are your plans for the future other than to continue being a YouTube sensation? <laughs> Well, I don't have anything except I would like to do more study on research of certain things like this weight control thing is such a big deal. And we're finding these new reasons why people are overweight, the insulin resistant thing, uh, the, uh, the opiate blocker thing. We're finding new things. And I'm excited about developing that more and working with people more on those different angles. Nice. Well, what do you think about the new uh, treatments for o obesity? You know, uh, Wagovi, Ozempic, how do you feel about those drugs? Well, a lot of the new drugs are very expensive. And so it's just the wealthy that are getting them. Uh, so that's one of the problems. Uh, by the way, this is my 100th anniversary day, <laughs> and I have all kinds of relatives coming in flying in from everywhere, Australia, Honduras, uh, Washington State, and I'm going to have at least uh, 20. I have my, my two children and their spouses are here. Seven of my not nine grandkids are here. I have nine of my 20 great grandchildren here. I have four of my nieces here. <laughs> and I having such an interesting time. And my daughter knows I like birding. She gave me two ties with birds on it. This one's a macaw that I'm wearing. And she gave me another one with flamingos, lots of flamingos on it. So I, I just love these ties. They're beautiful. But uh, well, today, you, look, you look so dapper and, 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 and you, you, know, you always dress with a tie though. Every time I've seen you, I don't think I've seen you not in a tie. Yeah, but but uh, I was at Yosemite yesterday. I I like going out into into nature, and I love uh, cutting trees, and and working out outside on cutting wood. You know, uh, I I enjoy that kind of stuff. But I'm getting a little too old to do some of it. I'm finding that the older I get, I'm having a little more trouble with the balance. Uh, rather than energy to do the distance. It's the balance of, sometimes. Uh, I think I need other kinds of exercise other than just walking. So have you ever thought about like working with a physical therapist or something? Uh, no, I haven't, but I believe in the idea. I believe in that idea. <clears throat> so what, here's a question. Dr. Scharfenberg, have you ever heard of Dr. Walter Kempner and the rice diet that was done at Duke University? Kempner? Dr. Yeah, Walter Kempner. Kempner. Yeah, did you, did you know him or did you know of him? No, but Kempner was the first one that started the right diet without salt or rice diet to cut down hypertension. Right, also also diabetes and in weight and and, and so- yes. Susie the, uh, said, Kempner, Kempner had a lot, a lot of very correct views. Right. I didn't know him personally, but I, I knew about his writings. We, we've actually had two of his people, two of the doctors that worked with him, Francis Nealon and Clarence Grimm, have both been on the show a few times. And Dr. Grimm considers himself the world leading expert in hypertension. And he always says that that your pee doesn't lie and that where there's no salt, there's no high blood pressure. And Susie, who's watching live, wants to know, is that a safe diet to go on? But you see, <clears throat> the problem with the no low salt diet. It's true, it's effective. But if you made the bread without any salt, the bread biz business would close down because nobody would buy their buy the bread. <laughs> so that's the problem. We know it works, but we can't, public health wise, we can't get people to get down that low. They need to cut it in half at least. Interesting. Do you eat bread, Dr. Scharfenberg? What's that? Do you eat bread personally? Oh yes, I eat bread. Nice. So 
I haven't gotten my salt level down to where it ought to be. What you know? do you happen to know what your blood pressure is? My blood pressure is a little high. So I take a I'm taking a medicine since 80. Now, if it started when I was 50, it would have caused a lot of problems right now, but it hasn't caused me any problems. Yeah. Misty wants to know how do you physically feel? Like do you have back pain, knee pain? How do you feel in your body at a hundred? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I have no problems. How about your teeth? Well, I I don't like to wear bridges. You know, I don't like to put in the false teeth, but I believe an implant might be good. I have two implants in my mouth. That just happened this last year. Yeah. So I have two implants. Otherwise, it's fine. But I like the electric uh, brush, ah. the B thing. I like that. I think that's really good. You know, you've probably seen a lot of changes in the world since you were born. Is what what impresses you the most? Like, is there anything like that either that was invented or something that you didn't have when you were little that you're like, wow, this is amazing. Well, the biggest thing that's happened in the US is the cleaning up of the water. So the water is safe to drink if you turn on almost any faucet. Whereas in China, you couldn't do that. In Mexico. <laughs> you you have to be very careful of water. You got to boil it, you know. And so the water was the big thing. The second big thing that happened, I think, was immunizations. We did immunizations. Now, the COVID thing is not an immunization. That's an experimental drug. If you look up the dictionary definition of immunization, it's a dead or attenuated organism that's injected into you. And that's not what COVID injection is. It's an RNA. They said the RNA would never get with the DNA. One's in the cytoplasm, one is in the nucleus, and they would never meet. Well, in in the, over in Stockholm, I think it was, Oslo or something, no, it was Stockholm. They did a study and they showed when you got the RNA, it went to the liver, H seven U H seven U seven cell. It's a cancer cell there, and it turned into DNA. And that was messing around with person's DNA. I think is kind of dangerous. I don't like that. So, uh, but for other things that are really immunization, we don't have diphtheria like we used to have. We don't have uh, a lot of things. We don't have. Uh, we got rid of. Yellow fever, we don't have. Polio, we don't have in this country. Uh, smallpox, we don't have. There's so many diseases we don't have. So that has improved a lot. So our average age has gone up because we're preventing the deaths in the young children that they used to all die. But now with these immunizations, we don't have those problems anymore. Mm, great. So those are the two big things that happen. <laughs> how do you how is your sleep do you fall asleep easily and sleep through the I, night? i don't my sleep isn't all that great <laughs> but i decided i make use of the time when, when i wake up can't sleep i get to the computer write something down that i want to don't want to forget <laughs> and put it on the computer so you, the next day i can finish it up how many hours would you estimate that you sleep You know, I probably sleep seven hours, but it may not be all at one time. At night, I might take a nap some days. Uh, you, you have such, okay, I've, I've only known you for less than a year now, but you seem to have a very positive attitude and a joyful disposition. Has this always been the case? It has. It has. Uh, I haven't had any real bad experience, experiences over a period of time, which left me depressed. I haven't had that kind of thing, you know. Nice. So, so I, I'm, I've, been, you... I've been happy, I think primarily because I've been trying to help others who, who are less happy. <laughs> I'm trying to help other people. Or, 
Nice. So one of the viewers is saying, do you have any suggestions for releasing anger if you find yourself holding on to anger? I'm guessing you don't hold on to anger, Dr. Sharma. I don't hold on to anger. No. I, you know, exercise does a lot for people. Getting a lot of exercise, you usually can't be very angry. <laughs> yeah. Um, but do you take anything to help you sleep, asks Misty. No, I don't. Nice. What do you do for fun? You know, the things that I like is birding, watching birds. I love that. That's what uh, I do all day, Dr. Scharfenberg. I don't know if you noticed in my house, all the birds that we have now with the bird feeder. It's just, I'm obsessed yeah. with birds, hummingbird. I just love them so much. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the birds. <clears throat> I like to find new ones, and uh, I, I, that's kind. Of, I think my favorite thing. Uh, I like gardening. And I used to work so hard gardening. My place used to be a gardener's paradise. It was beautiful. It was just beautiful. And the thing that I did the best, I think, was to grow grapes and make grape juice. I had better grape tasting grape juice. For my Concord grapes than I got can get at the store. <clears throat> What's your favorite food? I think mangoes. So that was Dr. Hans deal. Maybe is that an Venice thing? That's that was his favorite too. Yeah. Well, in the Philippines, there's lots of mangoes. Yeah. You ever <clears throat> had rice? I've had I've had mango with rice before. I I like uh, I like these soft uh, persimmons. Oh, and I like that's the my hard second. Ones. That's funny because I like the hard ones. Uh huh. And uh, so those favorite foods. I eat a lot, a lot of bananas. Yeah. Um, Marley says, "Do you take any supplements, Doctor Scharfenberg?" I take two. One is B twelve, and one is vitamin D. And at this age, I have to have them. My body. Even if we get enough sun, I don't get enough vitamin D in my bloodstream because of the thing that makes the D, our organs are not working at full speed anymore at my age. And now, one of my major problems now, I really like music. I like to sing, but I don't sing any because my vocal cords, the, the ENT man looked at him, he says, your vocal cords are old. What well, I'm 100 years they're old. Like, they're <laughs> old. Everything in your body is 100 years old, except for your yeah. lenses in your eyes are only 20 years old. Those are new. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so I, I, I like music. I really like music, good music. That's fantastic. And have you had you heard of this Chinese group, the Taurus, Shen Yun? I haven't. The beautiful gowns. Nice. I have a nephew that's coming. He sings with that group. Oh my God. Do you think anyone in your family will think to take pictures or even better shoot video of this special presentation you're having this weekend? I don't know whether I, I imagine there'll be people taking pictures. Yeah. I hope they'll shoot some video. Um, here's a question. Do you still garden? Freddie wants to know or have your own garden. I, I don't because I'm in an apartment. Oh, uh, you're in an and, apartment? I didn't know that. Yeah, it's sort of an apartment. And oh, anyway. Hmm. Um, one of the viewers said that they ordered a book that you wrote from a used bookseller, and it was excellent. You ever think about writing another book or republishing or making more available the ones you've already written? What, what book did you speak of? Uh, yeah, could you please put in the chat what book you, you're talking about, and we'll ask him. And uh, how much water do you drink a day? Yeah, that's my problem too. I don't drink enough water. I need need to drink more water. Well, can I get you a bottle like this? Because that's how I, I it's my favorite yeah. color and it's at my desk. And, and good. That, I, that's good. That's yeah. what we should do. Okay. Um, what's your favorite color? Blue? I'll get you one for your birthday if you promise <laughs> to drink water. <laughs> I don't know what my favorite color is. Probably blue. Okay. Wearing colors. 
blue works best with me. Yeah, nice. You look good. You look good in red too. Missy says, did you or do you have any pets? Because, you know, I've read the pets. I love pets, but I need somebody around to take care of them. <laughs> but I love them. And uh, I had a dog as a kid. I had a dog. I had a monkey. I had a deer. <laughs> I've had, I had some birds. Your canaries, and after they had a bath, they were sparrows. <laughs> that was in China. The dogs would learn how to uh, cut through with their teeth, cut through the rope, and return to their owner so he could sell it again. We had those kind of things happen. But uh, I, I like my dog the best. That, well, uh, that's great. Well, you can come over anytime and visit Bailey. Michelle says, what community do you have in person? What? What? Community. What, I don't know. what do you community? mean? Community, you know, like, you know, like me, I think she means like friends, family, like people, like people. Well, you know, I don't have much of that like I used to have. If I come here with my family, now I've got a whole bunch of them, see? But I didn't have, I haven't had that uh, up where I am now. I don't have a people that I know very well. I know one or two, but not very many. So it's been quite bad from that standpoint. Well, can't you get back to that place? No? Yes, I, I could. I, I need to be in some organization where there's group that I get well acquainted with. Nice. Well, we try to have you over every month if you're willing to come. We do our, you know, our potluck. We got a couple in January scheduled. The book that the viewer got was called The Problems with Meat. Oh, Problems with Meat. Yes, people say I should do that again. And I probably should. I probably should make something more technical than I had. Uh, uh, th that's an important subject. And people don't see the reasonableness of being a vegetarian. And they should be shown how reasonable it is to be a vegetarian. Yep. And then there's proof positive. Yes. I wrote the forward to that book and that's going to come out again, revised. Nice. Did you always want to be a doctor? I think so. I, I was argued with myself whether to be a minister or a doctor. I saw a doctor those had more influence with the people than the minister did. So that's why I went this direction. But I, I went to medical school in a school called College of Medical Evangelists. So it was kind of religiously oriented. And that's interesting. Adrena says, how are your cholesterol levels? And have you had any issues? And if so, do you have any advice? My cholesterol levels are good. Yes, they're good. But as I said, when I was at Harvard, and drank milk, gained 30 pounds. My cholesterol went up sky high, <laughs> up over 400. It was terrible. <laughs> and then I went on the diet that I was recommending to everybody else to do. <laughs> and if they didn't come down, I'd have to go to Mexico, leave this country, <laughs> get away from the people I've been trying to educate. But anyway, it came down nicely. Came down to 180 very quickly. Nice. Susanna says, Dr. Scharfenberg, what, what would you recommend that I do to help my teens and young adult children understand that the diet you recommend is the best diet for humans? Yeah, that's right. I think we need more reading material with that in it. That's the kind of thing I'd like to do. You know, we need to get information, scientific information to show the point that it is good. And there are too many other people writing stuff or, or commercially trying to promote something and getting you to eat food that is not the best. But I, I should, uh, like the vegetarian diet, the meat diet, we need to have good scientific stuff in book form, easy to read form that shows us it's true. Nice. Oh, do you you don't have any pictures of yourself when you were younger, do you? Mona's asking. I do. I have a few. I do you have any that you can show us? She's saying she bet you were she bet you were quite the looker. No, I wasn't quite the looker, particularly. <laughs> but I have 
some pictures of me younger, but uh, my my daughter made a book with a whole lot of pictures in it, and yeah. and somebody up at the church here at Doug Bassler's church made a slideshow with some pictures in it, showed me graduating from high school. I'd love to see that next time I see you. Here's a very a profound question from Richard. Do you have any regrets in life? Have any what? Regrets. Regrets? You know, I have very few regrets. One thing I thought, I, if I did my life over again, the only thing I would contemplate doing different would get a big farm and get little kids, orphans. I just love kids. <laughs> I just love kids. They all minds all work differently. It's kind of fun. I, I enjoy kids. But if I wanted to do what I am doing, health education, I think I would do exactly what I did. And I didn't do it with that purpose in mind. The Lord just led me that way. And I would do it the same way again. I've had the proper experience at medical school. Uh, teaching in medical school. I've done been with the top nutrition committees in the country, Interdepartmental Committee on Nutrition for National Defense. I've uh, been a county health officer, San Bernardino County. I've uh, been in research, Loma Linda Food Company, International Research Foundation. Uh, so I've had a little experience in all these things. I've been on surveys overseas. In Libya, did the, I was part of the survey team that did studies in Libya. Uh, I have all kinds of pictures of nutritional deficiency signs. Uh, so, and I've taught students in five weeks how to do health education. You don't have to have a year or two. You can do it with just a little bit of training. Hey, now that you're a YouTube sensation, you ever thought about going on other social medias, doing TikTok, doing Instagram? Do you know what those things are? I don't really know what that is. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious, Dr. Scharfenberg. I love that. Do you think they're going to have a big cake for you? And do you, do you ever indulge in, in sweet treats now and then? They're going to have a cake for me, but it's not one that I'll probably eat. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they're going to have a cake for me tomorrow. Oh, and uh uh, anyway, it, it's going to be qu quite interesting. The, my granddaughter is kind of arranging the meal. She's a dietitian. I taught at her, gra I, I had a speech at her graduation. <laughs> That's incredible. And your son became a doctor as well, right? Yes, he's a doctor. Wow. Um, yeah, Suzanne is saying you should have a Netflix series because you're really an influential person as a hundred year old expert on human nutrition, and you could really have a lot of impact with a new book. So let's get yeah. going. Let's get going, I, Dr. Sharpenberg. I, I think to have a to have good scientific stuff in a book form would be good. So this question is: What do you think is the reason you've lived so long? <clears throat> I have two. One's a religious reason. I think God wants me to still give out the messages I'm giving, <laughs> number one. But number two, I do believe that uh, exercise is why I've lived longer than my two brothers. Because of my exercise program when I moved out into the country and started cutting wood and that kind of thing. I grew a big garden, had 80 fruit trees planted, all that kind of thing. Uh, uh, that was what kept me going so much better than my brothers. Yeah, it's interesting how you say it's not just exercise, but it's exercise at a particular period of your life. When That's right. Kind of declining and winding down and becoming couch potatoes. That's, if I understand you, when we want to rev it up. Yeah, in midlife, we should be exercising. Usually we slow down and get fatter. In midlife. And that should be just the other way around. Well, maybe you could write a book, the, Dr. John Scharfenberg's Nutritional Wisdom, The First Hundred Years. Yeah, I, I think this is exciting to celebrate, not my hundred years. I'm celebrating the beginning of my next hundred years.
Exactly. Dr. Scharfenberg, I don't know what to say. I admire you so much. You're just so delightful and you just are an inspiration to me and anyone who comes across you. And I'm so thankful that I can call you friend. And as much as I want you to be in your community and your family, I'm kind of happy that at least for now you live here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, uh, thank you, Dr. Scharfenberg. It really and really truly happy, happy birthday and a hundred more. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time when I'm going to be making my holiday meal. You tasted it at our house, Dr. Scharfenberg. You came for Thanksgiving. Did do you enjoy the food when you come over? I please say yes. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. And and but, we told we told everyone not to buy you items to just send food home with you. So hopefully that was helpful. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Dr. Scharfenberg. This is your last chance. What, what do you want the world to know about anything, you, life, just end on a, anything you want to say, but that'll be how we end the show. Well, I think we should all live right in order to keep our, our bodies in good shape. And I think my religion is what leads me to want to keep my body in good shape. And I think there's a religious point of view that a lot of people don't have. But it's interesting when you talk about nutrition, many people are thinking of the religious aspect. It's interesting how that fits together. Great. Well, thank you, Dr. Scharfenberg, and happy birthday. Okay. Take care.